Does someone hear crickets? <laughs> okay, too soon. Um, I want to talk about this question. Question 27 uh, in the HSC Standard and Advanced paper. Calculate the number of chirps expected in a 15 second interval when the temperature is 19 degrees Celsius. What is going on here? Right. Uh, before I get into the answer, the answer is 29, by the way. And uh, good job to those who got it. It was not an easy question. I'll say that first of all. And it's significant. I want to explain the significance of this uh, for two reasons. The first reason is that it's actually the first five marker that we've gotten in an HSC exam. And NESA told us to expect these because, and to their credit, I kind of understand their reasoning. I suppose what they're saying is, look, in the real world, you don't always get problems in nice little sections and nice little parts that flow um, from each other. Instead, here's a lot of information and show us what you can do with it. So in some sense, I understand the skills that they're trying to build here. Uh, it is a lot harder. That's just the reality of it. Um, and so we need to better prepare our students for these kind of questions in the future as well. The other thing that's significant about this one is that it's the first time we've had this uh, common content across the standard and advanced paper. And so what that means is in the future we can expect more of these types of questions uh, which are really going to push the standard students as they uh, kind of develop this common scaling. How that exactly works, um, still a bit of a mystery, but we know that this is something that is something we can expect at least um, until Nessa changes things again, right? So uh, that's just a little comment about that. Let's get into the problem. Uh, the problem here is question 27. And the first thing to note is that there's literally about, um, wow, I don't even know how to say this, what, like a whole page of working out. So it's, even, it's a whole page of information before we get to a two line question. So I think that's just like a really interesting observation to make. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna highlight the important info and then I'm gonna use this to um, approach how we might look at the solution, okay? So how do we actually tackle this problem? Well, the first thing to realize is just to get your head around what's actually happening. A cricket is an insect. Um, no, let's have a look at what's actually going on. There's a scientist and he wants to explore the relationship between the temperatures in degrees and Celsius and the number of cricket chirps heard in a 15 second time interval. So essentially what's going on here is that we've got a scientist and he goes around and he wants to compare two sets of data. We call this bivariate data. He's looking at comparing temperature, so whether it gets hotter or colder, and the number of cricket chirps. So for example, he may have like a table like this. This is not to answer the problem, this is just to get your head around what's going on here. Let's say on a given day, let's, let's say Monday, right? Uh, we want to record uh, the temperature and we also want to recall the chirps that occur on that particular day in that particular time interval, right? So here's an example. Let's say the temperature is 23 degrees and the number of chirps that he hears is 37, okay? And let's say he's going around again on a Tuesday or something like that. Uh, let's say the temperature is 16 degrees and he hears like 22 chirps or something like this, right? Wednesday, 24 degrees and 39 chirps and so on and so forth, right? The question that this is essentially asking, right? Calculate the number of chirps expected when the temperature is 90 degrees Celsius. Let's say we've collected a lot more data than just these three days. We've collected this whole heap now. Can we predict if the temperature is 19 degrees, if the temperature is 19 degrees, what, how many chirps are they going to be? That's essentially what this is asking. How we approach the problem is by looking at what information we get. So let's now start deciphering what info they give you. And the key thing here is that we want to look at what's important and sort of discard what we don't need at certain points in time, right? So they give you a box plot. They give you that the mean temperature is something. They give you that there's a total number of chirps over 20 data points, and they give you this whole equation here, right? All of these are useful, but they're only useful at certain points along the way with the working out, right? So what I might do is I'm just gonna summarize this info and I'm gonna tell you what information you need at what point in time, okay? Okay, first things first, this 15 second time interval thing, that's just like flavor text. You don't actually really need that to solve the problem, right? Um, the box plot here, what that's used for is, well, it's used for this second dot point here. It says the mean temperature in the data set is 0 0.5 to 5 degrees below the median temperature in the data set. And remember how I said that there's two variables going on? There's the temperature, they say that that's the X, and there's the chirps, which is the Y. So essentially, we've got two things going on here. This is your information about X, right? About the temperature. This is your information about Y. So we can kind of like compartmentalize these and treat them separately. But bringing them together, that's what this equation here is for. And we're actually gonna need that to answer the question, right? But in order to do that, you'll notice in the equation, 
we don't know what B is. So this whole goal is going to be finding out what B is so that I can substitute x equals to 19 into my equation and solving it that way. So you can see there's a lot of moving parts here, but they're all going to flow quite naturally from each other. Okay? So let's have a go at breaking it down. Uh, the median first we want to work out. So the median temperature is, we know from a box and whisker plot, that value here. So the median of x, I'll write it over here, the median of x is 22 degrees. And I know that the mean temperature is 0 0.525 degrees below the median, right? So that means uh, the mean temperature, the mean temperature, or I can write that as x bar, is going to be equal to 22 take away 0 0.525. And that's going to give me 21.475 degrees. Okay, so far so good. I've got this x bar value that I can use over here. So I'm going to hold that over there, right? Okay. That's all these things done, so I, can, I don't have to worry about those anymore. A total of 684 chirps was counted when collecting 20 data points, right? So again, think about what the Y is talking about. The Y is talking about the chirps. But the other thing to note is that it says the least squares regression line passes through the point X bar and Y bar. So actually, if we can find these two points, that's going to be very useful for us. And in fact, we've got one of them already. How can we find the other one, the average or Y bar um, for the chirps? Well, think about how do you calculate averages? If you have a total, you divide by how many things there are, or in this case, data points, right? So Y bar, this is going to be the mean chirps. <laughs> that sounds so ridiculous. Mean chirps, Y bar, right? That's going to be 684 all divided by 20, all right? So let's go ahead and calculate that. So that's 34.2. So far, so good. So I've got all this info here. All right. Once we've done that, we have a few, we have these two points now. What are we going to use for that? Well, this here is called uh, a regression line. And what a regression line does, it helps us predict things that we don't know. Like, for example, here, that if we know that the temperature is 19 degrees, we want to know the chirps, we can use the regression line to do that. The only condition is that we need to know what this B variable is before we can use it. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, I've got my regression line here that I'm going to write down. And now what I can do is I can say, all right, once I have this information, I have these points that I can substitute in to evaluate what B is equal to. So I can say at X is equal to 21.475 at y equals to 34.2, what that means is I know that this is a point on the line, so I can substitute it in and replace these values here. So I get 34.2 plus b multiplied by this value here, 21.475. And at this point, remember, what's the goal? The goal is to find what b is equal to. And b is simply um, going to be solved by rearranging this equation. Right? So that's 34.2 plus 10.6063 uh, is equal to b multiplied by this number. And we're getting there. Can you see the last step? To find what b is, I can just think about my opposite operation. So I'll divide both sides by this. So b will equal to 34.2 plus 10.6063, all divided by 21.475. Okay? So just put all that into our calculator. Cool. And we're now getting that our B value, I'm running out of room, so let's go up here. B is equal to 2.086, lots of decimals here. Okay. Typically, we don't like to round until the very end, so make sure you hold that value. Now, here's the last bit, right? Remember, we had this equation. Remind me again, what was the equation useful for? Well, it was useful for finding out if I have one of the variables, I can um, kind of estimate uh, the other variable, right? So I have that x is equal to 19 degrees. So I have that at x equals to 19, I can go ahead and substitute it in to this equation here. So y is going to be equal to, uh, and I have my b value here, but I don't round it just yet, multiplied by 19. So, moment of truth.
And lo and behold, we get 29, that infamous number, 29.03606. And if we want to round to the nearest whole number, we can say the amount of chirps will be 29. Okay, say nearest whole number there. Yeah. Cool. And so that's how you solve the chirps question in the HSC Advanced and Standard Exam.